Hello my friends, Stark here, star date 2020.08.21. I towed in this 2005 Chevrolet Cobalt and diagnosed the problem to an inoperative fuel pump. The customer had notified me about a possible fuel tank or fuel line leak. I ordered a new fuel pump, dropped the tank, replaced the fuel pump, and refitted the fuel tank. As is typical, it was a horrible job. Having replaced the fuel pump, I switched on the ignition, and the brand new pump did not power up. So now I was in a panic. What could be wrong? I checked the 15 amp fuel pump fuse which is good, and I cheat checked the Type 3412 fuel pump relay by switching it with another relay of the same type. No dice, fuel pump still inoperative. And so I eliminated the fuel pump fuse and fuel pump relay as possible causes. I hit Google with a search for Chevrolet Cobalt fuel pump won't run and I found these car guru pages and in reading the text there's a bunch of guys with similar problems insofar as their fuel pump fuses and relays appear to be good they replace the fuel pump and it still won't power up and that's exactly the problem that I have here with my customers 2005 Cobalt. So several guys with the same problem here but as far as I could see there were no solutions. It's suggested that it's some type of wiring problem and it appears to be relatively common. I removed the fuel pump relay and using a short wire I bridged these connection points in order to bring power to this location. These of course are recesses in the fuse box into which the prongs of the relay would normally sit. With power at this point, happily and with much relief, the fuel pump powered on. That information tells me, and I hope that you would agree, if not, please comment below, that there's a wiring fault somewhere in this engine bay, perhaps on the underside of this very fuse box. Power isn't being delivered to the other prongs of the relay and as such it'll never snap shut its gate and transfer power to the outbound circuit in order to power the fuel pump in turn. I really admire the guys that can chase wiring issues and perform continuity tests at various points throughout the vehicle in order to pinpoint the exact location of a wiring problem but that's not my field of expertise. I would really struggle to perform such tests. My decision, therefore, was to rewire the power input to the fuel pump circuit, but still to use the fuse box, such to take advantage of the fused protection of the circuit. I didn't want an unprotected circuit sans fuse. Under the dashboard, I tested for wires that were energized when the ignition is switched on. I didn't want a permanent live. I selected this yellow wire, which I cut and reconnected with this capsule connector. The blue wire is stealing power from the yellow. and transfers the power to a toggle switch that I've installed in the 
dashboard fascia. If both the ignition and the toggle switch are on, then the white wire sends power to the fuse box. The white wire passes through an existing pair of rubber grommets, an inner and an outer grommet. You can see the inner grommet here and thence into the engine bay. Finally, the white wire delivers power to the right spot in the fuse box. Prongs of the relay are fine and thus a full-size spade connector is too wide for the narrow recesses in the fuse box. I used a pair of tin snips to carefully reduce the width of the spade connector by about half and that seems to give a good fit into the fuse box. It's worth mentioning that I could have run the blue wire directly to the fuse box and therefore not bothered with a switch but I thought the switch would give the owners a little more control plus it's a useful anti-theft device there's no way for a thief to start this car if the fuel pump is switched off finally I cut a notch through the fuse box cover for the white wire to travel through All right, let's test this. Ignition on. And fuel pump on. Note that the fuel pump is off, despite the fact that the toggle switch is in the on position. Remember that we stole power from a wire that was only energized when the ignition is on. Remember that the customer had told me that there was a fuel leak. Well, when I removed the old fuel pump here from the fuel tank, one of the two nylon hoses just easily and immediately cracked off of the pump head. Well, that led me to a tentative assumption that that was probably the cause of the leak if there was a little crack in the nylon and then I broke the whole thing off removing the pump. But as we shall see, I was wrong. Now, the new pump does come with two new hoses, so it didn't matter that the hose cracked off on this old pump. Here's the actual leak. A pinhole in a rusty fuel pipe. I replaced the rusted steel fuel pipe with high pressure rubber fuel hose, double clamped at each end, running from the fuel filter around the rear left corner of the car and to a point about two feet forward of the rear left wheel where I was able to reconnect to good steel fuel pipe. Well, my friends, it starts, it runs, it drives, but it doesn't drive well. This car has other issues. It doesn't like being in drive, and yet runs fine in park or neutral. The power steering is inoperative. I'm disappointed in how the car drives, and yet I don't feel guilty because... I completed the work that I was contracted to do and these are the problems appear to be separate issues. Thank you so much for watching my friends. Take care. See you next time.